Glue ups are always stressful because basically it's a 50 minute window where you can completely ruin your project. Now in this video I want to show you my five favorite tips and tricks to make them less stressful and get better results. Let's jump right into it. Tip number one, show up prepared. That can mean a lot of things. Now, for example, get your things ready, like the glue tray and something to spread the glue, as well as your glue. Being prepared also means you have enough time to finish the glue up. It, nothing is worse than having only five or 10 minutes to finish the glue up and then having to rush out of the shop because you have to do something else. It can also mean telling your significant other that you don't want to be interrupted in the shop, lock the door, do whatever, just make sure you have the time to finish the whole glue up. Another part of being prepared is the fact that you have tested your assembly and you have all the clamps that you need to assemble the project. For example, this case is way too big for the clamps here. And when I have glue on the case already and I then have to change out the clamps here, that is gonna be a hassle. For frame glue up, this also means getting out your framing blocks for your clamps so you can have the clamps in the right position to apply pressure. Tip number two use alignment aids. Now when you have two surfaces that are covered with glue and you apply pressure, they tend to slip because of the glue and you won't get a flush glue up. Some joinery like dovetails or box joints for example, they are kind of self-aligning and they won't slip on you. Alignment aids can be biscuits or domino like I used for example on my walnut tabletop that I built for my height adjustable desk as you can see here. For other glue ups, for example for smaller and rather thicker boards, you can also just put a clamp on the end like you can see here. It's not flush, then I can put a clamp here, apply pressure and get a nice flush panel. For long and thin panel glue ups you need something else. Because when you apply pressure at the ends only with clamps it might still not be flush in the center. And the solution is called a clamping call or clamping calls. Calls are nothing else than straight pieces of wood where you apply pressure from the top and you kind of sandwich your panel in between so it stays flush. Now when you sandwich your panel between your calls like this and, and put a clamp here and a clamp here, you might not have perfect pressure in the center. And to cover that we make them slightly tapered like this. So there is kind of a pivot point in the middle and when you apply pressure here and here they close the gaps on the ends. I will show you how to achieve that very very fast. To get that slight taper I will use my hand plane and make five passes on each side. I mark center here and then I go with a rather heavy cut five passes. I will start here make one pass, two pass, three, four and five. And this way I get a slight taper. One, two, three, four and five. Then I will turn it around and do the other side. One, two, three, four, five. Now as you can see the taper here is very subtle but when I push on the end it goes down a little and when I will clamp them it will apply pressure in the center as well as on the sides. Clamping the calls here can be a little bit tricky but you can simply take a bunch of rubber bands and temporarily hold them in place until you have the clamps on. Just like that, take your clamp, this way the panel ends up really really flush and you can apply the calls where it's not flush. Of course you can combine that with the clamps on the end to save some calls. Still this very glue up would probably end up in a disaster. Why? Because I have nothing in place that prevents the calls from being glued to the panel. And to prevent that I use some clear packing tape and just put it on the side where the call makes contact with the panel and the glue on the glue line. Just put the tape on there and then fold the tape over and this prevents the call from being glued to the panel. Another solution for an alignment aid would be a spline. A spline is basically a strip of wood that gets glued here into this dado and then make sure 
the two panels end up flush. Let me take a second here and thank the sponsor for this video, Bessie. Now, I'm a really big fan of their clamps and I approach them to work with them because I just like their clamps and want to promote something that I really can stand behind. Now, the parallel jaw clamps, I think they are beyond comparison, especially with all the accessory you also see in the video. Now, thank you and let's continue. Step number three, apply pressure right. Now, to understand how we have to apply pressure, let's have a closer look on how the pressure is distributed from a clamp. Pressure generated by a clamp spreads out in a 45 degree angle from the center of the clamp, like that. So here, on this case, we will have pressure here on our glue line, but not here and not here. And this means we need more clamps on this and this side. As you can see here, I would need four clamps to have even pressure along my whole glue line. The paradox thing here to keep in mind is the fact that when you have a narrower workpiece, you actually need more clamps because the pressure here and the force created by that cannot spread as far as here. On this workpiece that is considerably shorter than the other one, I would need five clamps instead of four because it is just narrow and the pressure does not spread as far here to the glue line. Applying pressure right on tapered pieces can be a little bit tricky. Now when you simply take a clamp here on the taper, you will not get nice even pressure around it because only one side of the clamp is touching the surface of the taper. An old trick to get around that is to take some off cuts, cut them with the same taper and then put them on here as you apply the pressure. As you can see, that you have two parallel clamping surfaces here, but it's kind of fuzzy to now place the clamp. And yeah, you also have to cover that with packing tape so it won't stick to your workpiece. Luckily, Bessie has us covered here with these swiveling adapters for your parallel jaw clamp. You can simply push them on instead of these black little plastic thing and then put it on your tapered workpiece, close the clamp and you have nice even pressure along your whole glue surface. Tip number four, remove your glue squeeze out after 15 minutes. By letting the glue dry for 15 minutes and then remove it, it's still a little bit gooey, but it's not fully cured. When it's fully cured, it's very, very hard. And when you take a chisel and try to remove it, you may lift up a wood fiber and pretty much break it. And then you have a hole in your workpiece, which you don't want, obviously. Now, when you take a wet rag and try to remove the squeeze out immediately after you apply the glue, you kind of squish around the glue and you might push it into the fibers and you will see that later on in your finished workpiece. And this way it's very, very easy to remove the glue squeeze out here and then move on with a perfectly nice joint. Fifth and final tip, keep your clamps in good condition. For example, on parallel jaw clamps, when you have glue here on the steel bar that gets hard, it's really hard to move these around because the glue prevents them from sliding freely. Now, to prevent that, it's fairly simple. Just take a little bit of paste wax and apply it to your steel bars here from time to time and the glue won't stick to that. Now preventing that is way less hassle than getting this glue off because of all the small divots that are in here. You need a wire brush and really have to go on it to get it removed again. Another area I want to make sure there's no glue is here on the jaws as well as on these plastic supports. Because when there's a drop of glue hardened and I will apply pressure, this drop will actually crush the wood fibers and I have a small dent in my workpiece and I of course don't want that. So from time to time I take a chisel and remove these glue spots. These are my five favorite tips and tricks about glue ups and clamps. If you have any further questions about clamps or glue ups, just let me know in the comments. I will be happy to discuss further there. The best way to support what I do, go to my store, check out the Kumiko starter kits and the shooting board I have. It really makes my day. If you haven't yet, make sure you subscribe and hit that bell notification so you won't miss a new video. 
Now all the clamps and tools I've used, I've linked you them down in the description below and I hope to see you in the next video.